fire on my mark. Starbases are to an interstellar empire what medieval castles were to a kingdom. They protect your borders, lock down the movement of enemy armies, and protect trade. In this video, we're going to be looking at starbase design, not just military starbases, which will be covered for the early, mid, and late game, but also economic starbases, how we can build them, and how we can best use the modules and buildings to benefit our economy. So without any further ado, let's dive in and find out what's going on. The first starbase design we're going to look at is a purely economic one. This design is specifically available only to geshed out consciousness empires, that is machine intelligence, or hive minded empires. These empire types get access to the solar panel network. For the low low cost of 50 alloys, solar panels will produce 6 energy credits every single month. Once you've researched the hydroponics farming technology, you'll also get access to the hydroponics bay building. By combining a hydroponics bay with two solar panel networks, we'll get a net output of 9 energy credits and 10 food. Now if you don't actually want to use this food, don't worry, you can use the internal market to sell 10 food for another 7 energy. And you can sell at least 130 food per month before altering the price. Overall, at the start of the game, it can be a great idea to throw up some of these economy star bases to help boost your economy as a geshed out consciousness. And if you're just a regular biological empire, throwing a hydroponics bay on a single station is also not a bad idea either. As you upgrade and expand your economic star bases, it can be very useful to put things down like resource silos. This increases the resource storage capacity of your entire empire. And generally speaking, it's usually better to use up one of these otherwise pretty useless starbase building slots than by using a planetary building slot for a resource silo. And if you build your starbase inside of a nebula and complete the zero G refinery technology, then you can put down a nebula refinery, which will also generate some exotic gases when you have the right technology. And if you're enjoying this video, please fortify that like button. Another key function of your star bases is as shipyards. By putting down a shipyard module, you can boost the shipyard capacity, and thus you can build ships. It can be a great idea to put down service umbilicals or battle simulators. Service umbilicals will reduce the upkeep of any ships in the orbit of the station by 25%, which is very helpful economically. And battle simulators increase the ship starting experience by 100. This starts your ships at level two, which gives them plus 10% ships weapons damage, which is not to be underestimated. You can also use your star bases to boost your naval capacity. Each anchorage increases your naval capacity by four up to plus six with a naval logistics office. You should probably use the other building slots available to help you economically as well because this star base won't be for fighting. Generally speaking, using a star base as an anchorage is the lowest value application for star bases. It's usually better to build fortresses and have soldiers on your planets or build fortress habitats if you'd like to know more about fortress worlds and what you can do with them, there is a link to that video down in the description. But what about if we want to build a starbase for a military application? A military application? At the beginning of the game, you only get access to two military type modules, the gun battery and the missile battery. The gun battery adds two medium sized weapon slots to the starbase, whilst the missile battery adds two missile weapon slots to the starbase. If we click on the details here at our starport, we can actually see the weapons and defenses we have on our starbase. It's important to know that whilst you can change these modules and buildings, you can't actually alter the individual weapons here manually. Starbases are always auto-designed. Right at the start of the game, the power level difference between a missile battery and a gun battery is very minimal. In fact, as soon as you research an advanced technology for lasers, kinetics, or missiles, that should help influence which starbase module you want to put on to defend your star bases. If you have better missiles, go for the missile module, and if you have better lasers or kinetics, go for a gun battery. We also get access to one building slot right away. 
If you're building a military star base, you only have three buildings available that are going to help you in combat. The target uplink computer is going to increase your weapons range and that of any defense platforms on the star base. The communications jammer will reduce the sublight speed and combat disengagement chance of the enemy ships. And the disruption field reduces shield hit points by 20% for the enemy ship. At the beginning of the game, I'd recommend you go with a disruption field generator followed possibly by a target uplink computer. There have been some issues with this module in the past, but I believe at the moment, or at least very soon, any problems with it will soon be fixed and it will apply its bonuses correctly. Once you've filled this out, the only way to get further slots available is to research better technologies to upgrade your starbase. For every level of upgrade, you'll unlock two modules and one building slot, with the final level unlocking no extra modules and just the fourth final building slot. In the early game, to boost your power any further here, you're going to need to build some extra defense platforms. Once you unlock FTL inhibition technology, that will provide a FTL inhibitor on each of your star bases. FTL inhibitors prevent enemy ships from leaving the system except by the hyperlane in which they entered from. If you'd like to know more about FTL inhibitors and how they work, there is a video linked down below in the description. And I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of my channel members and patrons for your support. If you'd like to become a channel member or patron, support this channel and get access to some special roles on my Discord server, you can click the join button down below or follow the link to Patreon down in the description. But what about when we get to the mid game? Well, quite quickly, you'll probably unlock the carrier operations, which will give you the hangar bay module. The hangar bay is the third and final defense module available to star bases. Like all of the other defensive modules, it increases your star base's hull points, armor points, protection range, trade protection, and defense platform capacity. This one, however, comes with a basic strike craft. Strike craft, generally speaking, are fantastic, and I really do mean fantastic, for fighting corvettes. This is due to the fact that their massive accuracy completely counters the corvette's main defense, which is high evasion. However, against other ship classes, they are generally lacking. And that means in order to work out which is the most powerful defensive module to put on your star base, you will have to keep track of the technologies you've got researched and make sure to check what is actually placed on your star base. In this case, given that I've only got tier two kinetics and tier three lasers unlocked, putting basic strike craft will be the more powerful option on my star base. Once you unlock strike craft, and as long as you continue to research higher levels and upgrade it, it is generally the best module to put down on your star base. Is that still true in the late game? Well, stick around and we will find out in a moment. Now with your hangar bays, you are going to want to put something like the communications jammer down. That will reduce the sublight speed of enemy ships, meaning it will take them longer to get into range of your starbase and thus give your fighter squadrons longer to attack. And throwing down a target uplink computer will increase the weapons range of your starbase and thus mean the engagement should start earlier because your missile, which probably has the longest range of anything, should engage first. The reduction to combat disengagement chance from the communication jammer will also help quite a lot because generally speaking, strikecraft have very low damage and require a vast number of shots to destroy enemy ships, thus massively increasing their disengage chance. This is especially true the larger the ship. How should we design our star bases in the late game? Well, by the late game, you should have unlocked all of the star base technology, and that means you can upgrade your star base all the way up here to a citadel. We will also have a larger selection of buildings to choose from, so let's look at what's good and what works well. First, it's important to see here that even though I have access to all of the technology available in the game, I'm still only getting tier three weapons on my star base. And that means that when it comes to adding more defensive modules, it is much better to add something like a hangar bay than a gun battery or missile battery, as a tier three advanced strike craft is generally a much better weapon than two tier three lasers or kinetics or a tier one disruptor. Always check on the details of your starbase when you want to add defensive modules, because even though it might seem something like a gun battery is generally the better module to add, as strike craft are not always as good, in each specific game with the specific technology at your disposal, the game will choose different things to put on your starbase and you have to be wary of that. This starbase is in a black hole system. Now, why is that important? Well, different systems have different types of environmental hazards or space weather. 
black holes reduce the disengagement chance for enemy ships by 50%. That actually makes hangar bays even more effective than usual, because the main weakness with fighters in the late game is the high disengagement chance your enemy will have when you use them. If we combine this with something like a communications jammer to get a 70% reduction to disengagement chance, then hangar bays, especially in this case with the tier 3 strike craft versus only tier 3 other weapons, become the best weapon. I've combined that with the mercenary garrison for an extra 15% fire rate, a target uplink computer to make sure the engagement starts as soon as possible, and the defense grid supercomputer. Adding defense platform capacity is pretty much the best thing you can do for a lone star base. Otherwise, adding modules like the disruption field generator, the command center for additional ship fire rate, the mercenary garrison for even more fire rate, or the communications jammer will all assist your ships. It's important to note the command center and mercenary garrison both add fire rate not just to the starbase and any defense platforms around it, but also to any of your fleets in this system. Given the size, weather of this system, and the possible weapons that will go on based on my module choices, I would actually fit this out with all hangar bays, a mercenary garrison, a command center, a defense grid supercomputer for lots of extra platforms, and a communications jammer. On the other hand, if I was expecting to have lots of ships in this system to render defense, I'd put a disruption field generator in instead of those extra defense platforms. Generally, the overall change in power level for your starbase, depending on the exact module you pick, isn't that high. The main factors that are important here are the buildings and defense platforms you put on your starbase. Something that is very important to know is that your offensive auras, that is the shield dampener, quantum destabilizer, subspace snare, along with the juggernaut auras, actually stack with the other auras here in the starbase. By combining titan auras, we can stack them in crazy ways to get things like minus 40% shield hit points and minus 40% combat disengagement chance without any space weather, without needing any environmental effect or space weather. This can be really useful for key engagements in key systems if you want to weaken the enemy fleets, as a 40% reduction to shields is pretty darn powerful. If you'd like to know more about defense platforms, how to design them, and whether or not they're effective at defeating enemy fleets, Click the video on screen now.